What are the different types of lighting in photography? Does it seem like there are too many lighting setups to know which ones to start learning first? I definitely know how that feels. And based on my 11 years of professional experience, I'm going to break down the fundamentals of lighting for you to make the whole process a lot easier so you don't just have to worry about memorizing different lighting setups. It's showtime. Hello, I'm Mike Lloyd. I run a multi-six-figure boudoir studio in Silicon Valley, California, and I love lighting. Now, I don't just shoot boudoir. Probably 95% of my income at this point, but I've done commercial fashion and products. I've shot families and kids and maternity. I don't touch newborns. I've done one wedding and I've done corporate events. I've photographed a lot of different things over the years. I've lit a lot of different people a lot of different ways. And part of being a photography educator, which I've done for about a decade, I've taught how to light a ton of different ways and the fundamentals behind all of it. All of that being said, you think I'm qualified? It is way easier to learn a few core concepts in photography rather than try and memorize a ton of different lighting setups. So here's what I'm gonna go over with you. What is the role of each light in a photo? Quality and quantity of light. High key versus low key. And the fourth thing is a surprise. You gotta wait till the end, but it's probably the most important. All right. So when it comes to lighting setups, everyone's like, do I do clamshell or loop? What about split? Should I try butterfly, short light or broad light? I don't know what to do. Well, if we look at the different purposes a light could serve in a photo, you will know where to put the light and what to do with it. Let's take our very first light that you would introduce into a scene. It's called the key light or the main light. It is the primary light source on our subject, the main person or object you're photographing. Then I would ask, what kind of light are you trying to emulate? Because when we put a flash in a scene, we are trying to recreate the look of another light source. Maybe it's the sun or the moon. Maybe it's a window light. Maybe they're overhead lights. It could be anything. And if you know what the light is you're trying to emulate, that will tell you where to put the thing. For example, if you want it to look like daylight, the sun is usually up. So that light is gonna be up higher. It's never gonna be down low because lights down low are for telling scary stories around a campfire. Moonlight could be the same, probably a little bit lower. If it's window light, well, where are windows? They're about this high. So your light is gonna come from that direction maybe a little bit higher. You're probably not gonna light anyone straight on. You could, that's how I light most of my subjects, because I wanted to emulate a moon or moonlight coming through a window. So my light is just slightly up from level with my client's chest. So about eye level, aiming slightly down, as if moonlight is coming through the window and they're sitting next to the window. That's how I create my look. But there are a ton of different things you can do. So again, if you figure out what kind of light you are emulating, that will tell you where to put the light and then keep everything at straight on from, you know, in line with the camera, 90 degrees to the camera, 45, any of those angles, you're gonna be golden. Okay, so what other lights will we put in a scene? The other ones are called kickers. This could be a rim light, which is usually lighting somebody from behind or from the back. It creates a rim of light around somebody to help separate them from the background. Or you can have a background light, which is a light shining on the background behind your subject. And the idea is so you don't have the dark side of your subject blending into the dark side of your background and the bright side of the bright side. You can alternate highlights and shadows to create depth in your image and really separate people from the background. Then you can place other lights in the scene just to light different things, to add more depth, more ambiance. You could add colored lights in the scene, little details like that. But primarily, we are lighting with a key light or a main light and then some other kind of light source to separate the subject from the background. All right, next thing. Quantity and quality of light. Let's talk quantity first. This is the, I think, most straightforward. How much light are you putting in the scene from each light source? Generally, the main light will be the brightest because the brightest thing in the image is the first thing our eyes see, and that tells us it's the most important thing in the image. And I'm gonna give you an example of the time when that's not true, but generally, the brightest thing in the image is the most important. Same thing with the sharpest. The sharpest thing in the scene is 
is the most important. Brightest, usually the most important. So we would want our subject to be the brightest thing. And if you put lights on anything else, they would be turned down a little bit lower. Now I can't tell you what power settings to use, what f-stop, any of that, because it all depends. But the idea is the most light will come from your main light, everything else a little bit lower. Then quality of light. This doesn't mean good or bad. That is a common misconception. Quality of light is the transition from highlight to shadow. Now you're like, okay, well that wasn't helpful at all. So if you go outside on a bright sunny day and look at your shadow on the ground, it is a U-shaped shadow, a Y-O-U shaped shadow, right? It is a very sharp, crisp outline of you. Now, if you go outside on a cloudy day, your shadow is just kind of a dark, fuzzy mass on the ground. There's no real shape or definition to it. That is the difference between hard light and soft light. That's how we describe quality of light. When it's hard, that means there is a very distinct transition from highlight to shadow. And when a light is soft, it is a much more gradual transition from highlight to shadow. So like old Hollywood movies where you have really bright lines and a really defined carved out jawline, that's hard light. Whereas when everything is very brightly lit, there's no real definition in the shadows, that's called soft light. And the larger the light source is in relation to your subject, the softer the light will be. The sun is a giant light source, but because it's so far away, it seems really tiny compared to an entire person. Therefore, it is a small light source in relation to the subject will get hard light. Whereas if you bring in a big soft box and put it right up next to the person, the light source is almost the same size as the person, you're gonna get soft light. Let's talk high key versus low key. Another commonly misused set of tools here. So when you look at a histogram, which is basically a chart telling you how much light is hitting the sensor at every point between total black and total white, so all the different grayscales, how much light is coming in at each of those points. If a majority of the exposure is towards the whites, that is considered high key. And if a majority of the exposure is in the shadows, that is considered a low key image. Overexposing the image so things are blown out, that's not high key, that's overexposed. On the flip side, underexposing your image so that everything is way too dark is not low key, that's just underexposed. So you will still have proper exposure, a lot of shadow to get a low key image or proper exposure with a ton of highlights to get a high key image. Let's rewind to what I said earlier about the most important thing being the brightest. There are exceptions. If you have an entirely white background and a small black product, maybe it's a water bottle, this no longer the brightest thing in the scene, but it's still the most important. So contrast is the real culprit there. The thing that stands out the most in the photo, generally the brightest, unless you're shooting against a really bright background, then it's gonna be the dark thing. Imagine uh, like a leopard in a field of snow. Everything is white, but you have one dark animal, obviously the most important thing in the scene. All right, lastly, and like I said, this is the most important thing, take notes. When you set up your lights in whatever fashion you do, draw a little diagram. Are there free lighting diagram makers on the internet? You just type in free lighting diagram and draw where the subject was, where your camera was, where the lights went, and what kind of modifiers you used. Soft boxes, grids, barn doors, whatever. That way, you know, later on, if you want to go back and recreate a look where your lights went. Now you don't have to measure with a measuring tape and think, oh, this was five foot seven and seven sixteenths away at an angle of 74.3 degrees. You don't have to get that specific. Just a rough sketch of where the camera was, where the lights were and where the subject was. So you can recreate it next time. Also, if you do this at two separate shoots and you like the photos more from one, you can go back and look at your lighting diagram, see what you did differently if you don't have everything stored up here and you can make adjustments and improve your lighting so much faster. But it's a great way to track what you've been doing and see what you can do differently next time to improve your result. Now, you're not gonna have to do that every time. I'm thinking you do it in the beginning until you learn what works where and then you can just walk into a room 
drop your light stands, put a person in, set your settings, and the first photo you know is gonna look exactly how you want it without having to take test shots. Practice makes perfect. So there you go. Rather than memorize different lighting setups, it's more important to learn the fundamentals of lighting so you can design your own setups to achieve your goal. So knowing the role of a light in an image will tell you where to put it. Learning the quantity and quality of light. Is it high key or low key while still maintaining proper, maintaining proper exposure? And are you taking notes so you can learn from what you've done and do it better next time? If you wanna learn more about lighting, I've got other videos here. I've also got very thorough step-by-step -step walkthroughs on boudoirguild.com within the membership site. You can sign up there and I will demo all of the lighting setups that you're ever gonna need to photograph people and make money. I will see you inside.